Good evening. I'd like to call the City of Menasha Common Council meeting to order. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have roll call, please. Alderman Benner. Here. Alderman Nichols. Here. Alderman Taylor. Here. Alderman Sevenick. Here. Alderman Collier. Here. Alderman Kruger. Here. Alderman Zielinski. Here. Alderman Grady. Here. The first item on the agenda this evening is public comments on any matter of concern to the city. If you'd like to make a comment, please step up to the microphone and state your name and address, and you have five minutes to speak. Oops. We're going to start. Well, the item. There, there you go. The park board. Pardon me? The mic wasn't on. Oh. Got you going now. You're all good. You're okay. Um, on the agenda tonight is um, a motion for installation of a fee to rent out an area of the harbor master's building um i've been up here numerous times before my concern is not so much what's going to go in there but my concern is that the process by which it's going forward um according to city code and i've mentioned this over and over before any the park department is an advisory committee. They don't have the authority to enter into contract labor agreements or leasing agreements. And it says here, uh, powers of the park board to recommend to the council and the planning commission, the buying, leasing, selling, or transferring of lands as well as the leasing of buildings and boat slips within the Menasha Marina. None of this ever comes before the Plan Commission or the Common Council. What they're trying to do now, it started out as a lease, and when I brought this forward, then they changed it to rent. Now they're trying to classify this area as a storage building. You know, it's like they keep trying to tweak it to make it sound more like, oh, we have the, the authority to do that. If they want to allow a for-profit business to use publicly owned facility on the waterfront, my concern is that it's going to open a can of worms and the next thing you know, all of our parks are going to be infested with for-profit enterprise. Um, and so now they're trying to call it, basically, it's a storage shed. Well, for example, and they want to lease it, rent it, or give it a fee for $75 a month. Um, so, for example, there I'm not saying you can't do that, but it needs to come before the council and the plan commission. It needs proper protocol. Uh, as an example, city of Sturgeon Bay at their Harbor Marina, there they have an agreement, a six page agreement. And this is just, they're saying because it's on slab, it has no restrooms, it has no heat, that it should be considered a storage shed. Uh, here, this is a rental of a slip an outdoor slip, a boat slip, um, for $2,500 a year. Uh, it's for docking space, seasonal storage of kayaks used in the course of providing gu guided kayak tours. And they forbid the ticketing facilities or other tour guest related uses of the premises. It's simply for storage of the kayaks. It's not even doing the actual business. And it's six pages, and it includes 
trash and recycling, signs, utilities, insurance with a $2 million umbrella, a $2 million liabilities, waivers that each participant needs to sign, hold harmless and indemnity, uh, no subleasing, no alterations or modifications, repair of damages, environmental damages, non-payment of rent, breach of contract. I mean, so it's a contract. There's more to it than just making this a simple fee. Another example, and this is one where it's actually uh, run as a kayak leasing place with concessions, which is what this kayak group originally wanted to do, was sell concessions. Uh, and that includes 5% of the annual sum of the total adjusted gross receipts on the sale of rental products like t-shirts and everything else that they might be selling with it, 20% on the receipts of the instructional programs, rental and guide to tours at $250 a month with a security deposit of 5,000. So, I mean, there's more to it than just simply saying this is a storage shed. That's why it needs to go through the plan commission and the council to bring up things like this that do we want to do that. Mrs. Taylor, you're Thank over you. five minutes. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Oh, all recently. Uh, all <laughs> racing to get up here. <laughs> A little taller. <laughs> uh, Larry Konetsky, 222 Lake Street, Manasha. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the Manasha Athletic Association and a Manasha Max Baseball Club. I'm here to present a check in the amount of $1,500 to the city of Manasha, designated to be used for Coslow Park dugout improvements. In 2017, the Max celebrated our 50, 69th year of baseball played in the city of Manasha. Our mission statement for the Max is to promote athletic sports recreational activities and create pastimes that foster sportsmanship, fellowship among the members of the organization and the general public. Throughout our history, the Manasha Athletic Association has been active in the community and contributed to numerous activities like the Trestle Trail and uh, Community Fest and so forth, projects and teams. And with the donation, our intent is that future teams across all level of play have a facility that safely and comfor comfortably enables them to play the game of baseball and it is continues to be the premier facility for amateur and high school and baseball teams in the area. Uh, we, the Max, look forward to continue being part of the ad hoc committee of the Park and Rec Board working to improve Coslow Park for baseball. We had a meeting in October and now that the football season's over, we're going to get together with the high school coaches and everything. So. I get a check for fifteen hundred dollars. And Brian, would you like to? Brian, would you like to get that? Thank Here you go. Right, appreciate it. No, Thank you. Very much so. <laughs> Can't wait for the meeting. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Lenth, 537 Broad Street. Um, I came to the council back in June uh, when they were talking about um, the city owning the bridge and I was assured by the uh, several council members that it was their job to uh, find the money when I asked them not to be taking it out of my taxes and um, I'd like to know at some point in some form um, where that money's coming from, if they've found the money yet without taking more money out of my taxes. Um, I'd also like to um, reference the um, referendum coming up. I lost where it was. Okay. 
Okay. It's R 27-17A, resolution, um, place an advisory referendum, referendum on April 3rd and introduced by Alderman Taylor. Um, I think this is a great idea because then it will let all the um, members of this, or the uh, city uh, residents actually vote on this and decide whether or not they want the bridge. Um, I still say that we do not want to own a bridge as a city and I still stand by that. But I'd still like to know from the council where that money's coming from. Christopher Evenson, 523 Broad Street. Um, I'm speaking tonight on behalf of myself and my wife, 20-year uh, residents at Broad Street. Uh, we fully support Alderman Taylor's proposed referendum to rehab and not replace the Racine Street Bridge. I've been active in the discussion of the Racine Street Bridge replacement, have looked at the options, have spoken to the council before on one of the issues involving the roundabout. So it's a matter that's dear to our heart. It's a half block from our home. Um, I've also been active and was active in monitoring the demise of our steam plant project, which resulted in a $40 million city debt and downgrading of the city's bond rating. I actually paid for copies of the depositions in the litigation involving the steam plant, which included our former mayor, utility manager, and others. From that sworn testimony, I concluded that the city of Menasha had no business owning a steam plant, despite the good intentions that the mayor at that time had in preserving jobs. As I understand it, if the state replaces the bridge, they cover the cost, including the condemnation of Doc Larson's building and others. But that's it. The state pays a one-time cost, washes its hands, and then we own the bridge. Do we know what is involved in bridge maintenance and repair, what that costs? Do we know what it costs to insure a bridge? What if it's poorly constructed and we have to replace it early? Are we going to be setting aside a million or two per year to replace the bridge in 50 years? Because that will be our responsibility. Why not set up some kind of a fund like that, extend the life of the current bridge, and then we've got time and money to learn how to operate a bridge if we're going to ultimately take over the ownership of this thing. I know there's been talk about a change in the state law so that the state maintains ownership or perhaps a change specific to Menasha since we are part of the locks system. But if we repair the bridge and the law changes so the state maintains ownership, fine. They can do with it whatever they want it, whenever they want to replace it. But the bottom line is that the citizens of Menasha deserve a referendum to be heard on this major discussion on a vital and expensive piece of infrastructure. Thank you. Is there anyone else this evening? Hi, I'm Bonnie Dolphus. Whoops, I'm sorry. My tax bill. My taxes went up $50, about $50, and that's unaccept unacceptable. Mayor and all aldermen who voted for this tax bill, we're number one in taxes in Menasha. Wow, pretty good, huh? I'd like to thank all the aldermen that voted against the mayor's budget. Thank you. Mayor, you are fiscally irresponsible. I can't believe how you passed this budget. Unbelievable. The state of Wisconsin, you should keep the bridge. Menasha doesn't need their taxes and a higher, any higher. And mayor and council, let the citizens vote for the referendum for a new bridge. We don't need a new bridge. No. Let the citizens vote for this new bridge, and I would vote no for a new bridge. We don't need it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening? Seeing no one else, we'll move on to the report of department head staff and consultants. Um, I'm not sure how long my voice is going to hold out tonight, so I'm going to turn it over to Chief Seika regarding the, or are you doing it, Pam? I can start. The Narcan presentation. 
Thank you. I wanted to bring this to the attention of the Common Council and the public. And it has to do with the, I think we need to be aware of the dangers that our employees, public employees, uh, are exposed to. Law enforcement, but not only law enforcement, other uh, public employees as well. And one of them has to do with um, it, uh, fentanyl, exposure to fentanyl. And if anyone uh, has read about in the paper or heard anything on the news with regard to those types of exposures, um, it only takes about five or six kind of the size of uh, grains of salt. That, that it's a powder and just about five or six grains of salt. If they're in the air, it can be inhaled. If it's on the skin, the skin can absorb that fentanyl and it can cause a, an overdose. And if you read about in the paper and on the news, heard something that unfortunately we did have occasion in the city of Menasha where an employee was exposed to fentanyl. But I think what is also important not only to be aware of, of the dangers that our employees are exposed to, but what came out of that as well. And I, I think it's important for us to, to know what came out of it. We um, there were various departments that came together and were involved in developing what a response could be to this particular workplace exposure. And in an effort, obviously, to protect our employees as well as protection of other communities' employees. And what we have queued up, and we'll show in a minute, is the police department and the Wisconsin Department of Justice put together a, a video, which is going to be shown uh, to other law enforcement agencies across the state of Wisconsin. Um, it will be shared, uh, informing other departments of what could happen and how fast it can happen. Uh, in addition to that, there was a, what we call PPE, or um, I have to think of what it stands for. <laughs> yes, thank you. Personal protective <laughs> equipment, yes. Uh, for um, potential fentanyl exposures. So we, um, or the, uh, Health Department and the Police Department worked together, um, particularly Todd Drew uh, with our Health Department to put together a kit that is now contained in uh, all of the squad cars uh, to ensure that our employees are protected. And of course, this is something that, that just came up. And so everyone, <coughs> Um, went to action and put together uh, this kit. We did get uh, some funding through our insurance company and our insurance company became involved as well and as a result of looking at um, this instant and how it obviously could happen anywhere, our insurance company had was going around to uh, throughout the state um, meeting with and training, giving training to other CIVMIC members and was providing Narcan. And Narcan is like an anecdote to uh, an overdose. And it is um, a couple of doses were provided to each of the CIVMIC members um, so that they would have them uh, available. And also training on how to administer in the event of an exposure. We also sent 
employees from other departments to this training. It was held, uh, the one that was held in this area was held at the Menasha Police Department. And we sent other departments to that training as well so that um, all of our employees are informed um, in case there would be some type of, of an exposure because it just takes so little um, library personnel, if somebody happens to have some on their clothing and there is a person who's a drug de drug addict is in the library, um, if someone's coming to pay a bill, um, uh, our code enforcement perhaps, if they are going into um, homes or the health department going into homes, utility uh, maybe going into homes and if there happen to be any um, uh, drugs in, in that home, there could be a uh, potential and ex exposure. And of course, the um, highest risk would be for our uh, fire and law enforcement. Um, our, I think I mentioned, yes, that our insurance company as well, uh, there was a, a policy that ha was put together by the police department and the health department, and then that was um, and the contents of this kit, and our health in, or our um, insurance company is taking and using this policy that was developed in in house by our folks, and is um, being used as a model uh, around the state. And perhaps we can, if it's queued up and ready to go, we're not going to show the whole thing. It's about 15 minutes, but I just thought that um, perhaps we could show um, uh, a little bit of it. Abandoned houses, our officers and some of our um, code enforcement can come into contact with um, uh, drugs that are left in in a in an abandoned home, and it's a very real problem. I don't know if Stan has a question. Um, just wondering, is this something that we can share then on our city's website, and also on the police website? And we'll ask IT if they can do that. Well, and we'll ask. Uh, well, the. Video is actually only going to be used with law enforcement. The video is actually only going to be used for law enforcement purposes. Department, I've been here about two and a half years now, and just wanted to share with you my experience or my exposure that I had. Myself and other officers were dispatched to the 900 block of Third Street here in the city of Menasha for a mail that was not breathing in a car in a parking lot. Um, I'm first to arrive there, shortly followed by the other officers. Uh, I looked to my left and observed a Pontiac with two individuals standing next to it. I figured, yep, that's for sure got to be where the individual is. Uh, get on my squad car. Um, he's in the back seat laying down. He has a blanket over the top of him. Um, immediately grabbed onto him. I could tell that he was still warm, so something that had to be recent he hadn't been there for a long time so i first made contact with the uh the male individual in the back of the car um obviously we checked for signs of life and when i first touched him um obviously i checked for a pulse in his neck area i didn't feel anything he wasn't breathing but he was still warm and when i was trying to get him out of the vehicle i could still move his arms and legs and heads um pretty easily so it made me believe that he wasn't in that back of the car for very long and his friend estimates that the last time they saw him um, breathing would have been about 20 minutes. So this happened in a time frame of only 20 minutes. But upon just initially looking in the car for a first quick glance, I don't see anything that would make me believe that this is drug related at all. Um, I do grab onto his shirt right near his head area. Uh, at this point in time, I don't have my gloves on. Uh, he's a bigger guy, probably around, like I said, 230. Um, I'm, I'm a little smaller guy, so I had a hard time getting him out. Um, eventually, with the help of my lieutenant, we're able to get him out of the vehicle and place him on the ground so that Gold Cross can start administering aid. Uh, once he's down on the ground, um, I again start looking around the vehicle, trying to figure out what 
you know, what, what could have caused this. Uh, the vehicle is completely clean on the inside. There's a few articles of clothing in there, and there's a blanket um, that he was laying in it, or that had covered him up while he was in the back of the car. Um, so as the CPR is going on, me and other officers are looking. Um, it's about right after the, we take him out of the car and do CPR on him that I put my, uh, my, my gloves on and start doing a search of the vehicle. Again, search of the vehicle comes up, nothing found. Um, doing some more digging, we find out that he is a known drug user, um, preferably heroin and meth, and that he had previously been picked up in Oshkosh at Rock USA. And when his friend went and picked him up from Oshkosh, he was acting kind of strange, kind of tired, lethargic. Um, didn't all seem to be with it. He didn't think it was alcohol-related because it wasn't anything that would show uh, that it was alcohol-related by any means. Um, come to find out, we're able to find where his actual car is located at the Plainview truck stop in Oshkosh. Um, so while we're still on scene there, obviously he's, he's, pronounced, he's pronounced dead. My lieutenant gave me the responsibility to go and locate the vehicle and see if there's anything in it that would explain what caused this, this man to die. Um, look for any sort of drug paraphernalia, photograph the, photograph the car, and then report back to him as to what, what I found. Um, so shortly thereafter, I, I saw my latex gloves on. Um, right before I'm about to leave, I got a little bit of allergies, so I wiped my nose take my gloves off, and then place them in my squad car in the cup holder. Um, and then as I'm driving to um, Oshkosh, I'm on South on 41, and I remember being right near the M-Shuttle um, freight sales sign, so I remember the, the moose that's always on that sign. Um, right about that time, I get extremely hot for about 15, 20 seconds, and uh, I thought it was just, you know, there was an adrenaline, I filled the journal in a moment before. It was hot outside. Maybe I'm just dehydrated. I didn't eat all that much that day. You know, it was something, something that I did. Um, real hot for about 15, 20 seconds, and it goes away. I'm like, wow, oh, that was weird. And then right after that, I get the dizzy, kind of confused as to, you know, I, I know where I am, but I'm not feeling right. Um, at that point in time, I'm thinking, you know, Am I overreacting? Do I just continue to go to where I need to be, which is what I remember looking at a sign. I was about eight miles from where I needed, from where I was to where I needed to be to get the car. At that point in time, I started feeling real, just kind of weak, um, numbness and tingling in my legs. It actually starts in my legs, feet area, where I'm just tingling. It's numb. Um, my hands are numb. My legs, or my, my hands go numb. Arms are numb. This is when I know something's wrong. And just from, we've had numerous emails and just kind of updates as to fentanyl and the, you know, some of the side effects of it and the dangers of being exposed to it. And that's right at this point in time where I, I figured I was definitely had some sort of an exposure. I mean, all my anxiety was, well, when this was all going on, it, it was through the roof because you start thinking, you know, I'm not going to see my friends again. Um, I was due to get married in a month. I'm like, oh, I'm, I may not make it to the wedding, uh, you start thinking about, you know, I could have done this differently, could have done that differently. It, it was just a overall scary experience, and I mean, there's nothing worse than being in a car, and you're feeling the experience by yourself, no one's around, and you can obviously sit there and reflect on, you know, and you're not going to see your friends again, I'll never see my parents again, my brother, or anything like that, so, it sucked. <laughs> So I went reach for the mic, which is attached to uh, to a large magnet, so it doesn't move around. Um, as I'm going to pick it up, I can't pick it up. It takes me two or three times to yank on it or, or to pull it up. Um, finally, I'm able to get it up, and my dispatch know something's wrong. Um, I'm right near the exit to where the Winnebago County Sheriff's Office is. Uh, they can have an ambulance just meet me there. Um, at this point in time, I can just feel my whole body is starting to shut down. Um, I, I kind of described it as if you're really tired and you just don't want to move anymore, that's exactly what I was feeling. Um, also, uh, my heartbeat, I mean, it was pounding, but 
even though my heartbeat was up, I could feel my breathing starting to slow down. Um, eventually, I'm able to make it to the sheriff's office where I pull into the, uh, the front parking area there. And it's shortly thereafter, I get on my, my squad car, I start taking off uh, my uniform, my vest, my duty belt. And it's right then and there that the a deputy from the Winnebago County <coughs> Sheriff's Office pulls in right behind me, and he's, he's there kind of talking me through, asking me what's going on. Um, I take a seat on the curb, and I can still feel all the symptoms, the tingling um, in my arms is getting worse. I just, I mean, I, and I believe I told him I just wanted to close my eyes and fall asleep. Um, and that's when he asked me if I wanted the Narcan. He said, it's not going to hurt you at all to try it or, or to do it. It's, it can only help you. Um, so I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll take a dose of it. So he gives me one dose. Um, he uses the one that you can take up, um, shoot, it shoots up your nose. So he gives me one of that. And I was given my first dose of Narcan. Um, about two or three minutes after that, I still was feeling the, the same symptoms that I was before. Uh, nothing got better. And that was when they gave me my second dose of Narcan. Uh, right around after that second dose, uh, the fire department paramedics show up. Um, they start taking my vitals. Uh, and I estimated about two minutes after that second dose, they asked me if I can stand up. Um, and I'm able to stand and walk on my own, still a little bit rubber-legged, um, just from the whole experience. But my symptoms are gone. I, I don't feel like I wanted to fall asleep anymore. The numbness in my legs are completely gone. I'm, I'm completely... So I just wanted to give you a flavor of the officer's experience there. And as I stated, this was put together, and I think uh, Chief Steika can give a little bit more information about it. Yeah, I think you pretty much covered it. I know there's a lot on the agenda. So um, basically this video was created by Training and Standards to, as, as the city attorney said, to really try to get this message out. Uh, there's been a lot of information that I know that's been put out through law enforcement channels prior to this. Uh, it was one of the reasons why about two weeks before this incident, we actually trained all of our folks on the use of Narcan because we decided that, you know, the fire department and Gold Cross have been doing a phenomenal job. We've yet to lose someone that hasn't been able to get it, but we also realized that there was the potential of an officer or someone being exposed and to have that right there and then would be valuable. Well, sure enough, uh, two weeks after the training, I think that's what kind of paid off with Officer Abraham said because he recognized the signs and symptoms that he learned about in training and uh, made some good decisions to get himself the help and was obviously able to recover from this. Uh, then to echo the other thing the city attorney said, which I think is just phenomenal, is the work that Todd Drew put into this afterward. It just kind of shows the collaborativeness of, of all the departments where he was able to come up with this whole PPE program, uh, assembled these kits, came in to numerous briefing trainings. Uh, he's still doing some mask tests for us, but it was recognized as no one knew what to do with this stuff. And the work that Todd put into this, as Pam said, was taken by CIVMIC. It's been distributed to all of our members. I've had other agencies contact us asking what we're doing with this stuff. So really he uh, was a trendsetter and something that could be unfortunate for another municipality as well. So a, a terrible thing we hope none of our employees would have had to have experienced, but unfortunately it did, and um, thankfully uh, there was a positive outcome, not just for that particular employee, but for um, others we're hoping uh, throughout the state. And then, like I said, uh, training our, um, our other employees as well. And we do have Narcan available here, uh, in City Hall, too, th at the heart, uh, Health Department. So we, um, it's important that if administration is needed, that it occurs quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know who to direct this question at, but what about our sanitation workers? Uh, they're out there uh, removing things uh, on the curb from people's homes, and uh, do they have this training, too? Yes, and <coughs> thank you. Thanks for asking, because I, that was a, a group that I forgot to mention, but we did have sanitation as well at this training. Yeah, all of our uh, public works facility, or all of our public works facility employees got this training about two, three weeks ago, so. 
Okay. And our park department too, because they're in our park system and yep. these people are out there too. Yep. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, moving on. Uh, we Director Tungate has another check to be presented to him this evening. The pace setters are here this evening to talk about a donation to Loop the Lake. Ned, did you want to? <coughs> Christmas giving here at the park and rec, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Brian. I'm say a couple words about yes. this? Yes, that'd be great. Sure. Let me, uh... <clears throat> Mayor and Alderman, City of Menasha, <clears throat> I'm very excited to be here tonight to represent the pace setters of the Fox Cities Running Club. Um, exciting moment for the pace setters, and we hope also for the city of Menasha. Um, just by way of brief background, <clears throat> the pace setters Running Club was founded back in 1984. Uh, the pace setters are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. In as far as um, our size and impact here, um, our club membership right now, we have over 400 paid members here in the Fox Cities, and we're a very active organization, um, not just uh, focusing on running and walking and fitness, but uh, uh, just um, really uh, looking at uh, <clears throat> a focus of health, wellness, and fitness. We're very excited about the <clears throat> upcoming in construction loop the loop the lake trail project um, which is scheduled to open as i understand in june of 2018. <clears throat> so we fast forward uh, from 1984 to 1995 and the formation of the greenways of the fox cities organization which came together a group of people that came together here locally here in the Fox Cities to work on the development of recreational trail projects and uh, to coordinate communities here in the Fox Cities. The Pace Centers, uh, we got involved in supporting some of the projects uh, that Greenways um, was involved with. <clears throat> and we fast forward from there to 2006. In 2006, the Pace Centers donated $1,000 for the completion of the construction of the Trestle Trail. Very exciting moment in time. And um, so now we, we fast forward here into 2017. In the spring of this year, uh, the pay centers, we donated $2,000 to the Navigate Nina Menasha Trestle Building Fund to help get the two trestles built help pay for the construction of the two trestles currently under construction and very exciting and now we come to this evening and this moment uh, the pace setters of the fox cities we are uh, here tonight to present the city of menasha with a check for one thousand dollars this one thousand dollar donation is part of a $3,000 total donation that the pay setters are doing this week with $1,000 going to each one of the three communities involved in the Loop the Lake Trail. The 3.1 mile Loop the Lake Trail when completed, uh, which incorporates segments of the city of Menasha, the city of Nina, and the village of Fox Crossing. So this week, we are presenting each one of the three communities with a check for $1,000. That $1,000 is uh, targeted specifically to be used by the city of Menasha for trail amenities, in effect, for the completion of the Little Lake Trail segment in the city of Menasha and any amenities which the city sees fit uh, to be constructed on the trail when it opens in June of 2018. So it's my pleasure at this time to present to Mr. Brian Tungate. Brian, of course, is aware of what's happening here. Uh, <laughs> 
But it's uh, it's uh, my pleasure on behalf of the Paysetters to present to Brian and the city of Menasha a check for $1,000 and um, have fun with it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's the big check. <laughs> this is, this is the real one. <laughs> That's the real one. Here's the, here's the real deal. All right. Right? I'm going to here. Enjoy. Thank you, Ned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've been sick, Ned. Oh, Thank you, Ned. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ned. <laughs> Item three is the minutes and communications to receive. Do we have a motion? Alderman Sevenek. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'd like for the council to receive minutes A through J and communications K through T. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Semnick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to ask the Chief a question. I should have probably brought it to your attention before, but everything was going on. But I noticed also we did receive another check donation from the Fox Cities Marathon for, I believe it was $1,000. Yes, we did. And, but the thing is, is even though that we do receive that and, and it's appreciated, um, what type of, what do you do as your department in that uh, do for this and does this even cover some of the cost? Well, as part of the special events policy, uh, they get billed just like anyone else does for an event that happens in Menasha. Okay. So they do pay their fair share of uh, traffic direction, employee costs, so on and so forth, traffic barricades. Um, so this is kind of above and beyond what they would normally pay for their services. And this was a gift basically given to us through the city. It basically goes to the general fund, but there's been some things that we've talked about um, for enhancing special events going forward that these monies could be used towards. So in essence, it's a gift that goes back to the general fund. Okay, thank you. Yep. I, I, because of the checks that were being handed out today, I thought I would bring this to uh, the taxpayers out there, their attention that um, that these organizations do uh, pay for their services, and that uh, the Fox Cities Marathon group did make a thousand dollar donation to the city. Alderman Nichols. Thank you, Mayor. A letter F: The Nina Manash Fire Rescue Joint Finance and Personnel Committee draft minutes from last Monday's meeting in uh, reviewing the minutes I contacted the chief and we um, discussed what was recorded in those minutes and although I did uh, not support the amendment offered I voted yes to the purchase of the fire truck the, f the final motion as amended and I just wanted to make everyone aware of that and the chief and I will work on some amendments that will come through at the next committee meeting. Alderman Taylor. Thank you Mr. Mayor. <coughs> uh, item, uh, item S, uh, the police uh, department accreditation uh, this is a, an outstanding accomplishment, Chief, uh, for your department. There's over 400 departments and agencies in Wisconsin, and there's only 35 that have uh, got to this status. So congratulations to your department, and I just want to give you an applause for that. Thank you, sir. Seeing no one else, could, uh, well, whoops, I heard Alderman, Alderman Zalitsky. Thank you. Um, just on the letter N about the 
weight restriction Racine Street Bridge. I saw this come up in the, when I was going through the Post Crescent and I never saw anything the up to date. Did we ever get a memo or something from the state that listed that they have $1.1 million in design and engineering into this? I, I, after we got this, I knew that that would come up at today's, or at today's <laughs> meeting regarding the referendum. So I did reach out to the state and ask how much engineering they have put into this project, and it is $1.1 million. $1.1 million? Yep. And was that directly, I saw that there was a quote in the newspaper that he said, nothing with this weight limit is tied to the age of the bridge. It's all to do with how it was first constructed, that it was yep. never made to retain that kind of weight. Yep. Okay. Just making sure because I didn't see that in this memo. Thank you. Alderman Taylor. So, uh, Director Joshua, this uh, this weight limit should have been put on 65 years ago. Then is that correct? It, it, it's based on the DOT, you know, ratings. We don't. The city of Menasha does not have any, you know structural engineers to determine weight limits of a bridge that is a 100 percent a state owned you know state bridge so they operate it and that's you know so it's their weight limit you know so it just came out now that it's 30 tons but this was uh, according to your memo there was something about this should have been put on earlier at some time uh, i i believe that it is related to the steel decking and some of the steel decking is a little thinner at this point. Now, whether that's due to corrosion or due to the actual design of the steel decking, I don't know. Uh, in the future, we'd like to see the state documents on that when something's sent to you like that, too. It, it was just, a, it was actually a verbal commu communication that they were lowering the weight limit to 30 tons. It was an informal email that was sent to me regarding it. Okay. I'm surprised. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised there wasn't a press release to the Post Crescent or something with that. So, uh, uh, I know the state does like to waste a lot of paper and send out a lot of extra stuff they should. So, we should see something like that in the future. There should, we shouldn't be working on verbals. We should be working on uh, documents from the state. Thank you. As I said, we did receive an email regarding it, and they were putting out their own press release. However, when they put out their press uh, release, it was... A copy of the, even a well, it, the email. It's literally two lines long saying that it's going to be lowered to 30 tons. Yeah. So yeah, I, I can get of, you a copy of that. Even a copy of that with their website on it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item G is the consent agenda. And there are 14 items on there this evening. I am going to let whoever makes the motion read them. Is there any one, does anyone wish to have any items separated this evening? Alderman Sevenick. Yeah, I thought that would probably be the best thing first so you didn't have to go through them all because <laughs> I'm going to ask that three of them be set aside. That would be item 12, which is the, uh, because of the costs, um, the F Pierce uh, fire truck, and then in Park and Rec, uh, item 13, which is the uh, Harbor House rental fee, and then the Park and Rec fee reciprocity agreement with Fox Crossing. Are there any other items that someone would like separated? Do we have a motion for the remaining items? Alderman Sevenick? Thank you, Mayor. Oops. Oops. Here we go. Thank you, Mayor. At this time, I'll move that we approve the Common Council minutes. The administration recommendations, the Board of Public Works recommendations, and the Personnel Committee's recommendations. There's a motion, a second. Could we have? Sorry, oh, I'm sorry. Was it Alderman Grady? Uh, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item 12 is the ordering and purchasing of a 2018 Pierce Impel engine. Do we have a motion regarding that? Alderman, oops. Alderman Sevenick? Did you want to read it? No, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> this is a long one. So uh, basically this comes from the Nina Menasha Fire Rescue Joint 
Finance and Personnel Committee um, that we recommend approving the ordering of the purchase of the 2018 Pierce engine and related equipment <coughs> to replace a 1997 Pierce Quantum for the cost not to exceed $559,240 of the approved, which was uh, budgeted, the $590,000. Um, let's see, it's, how can I shorten this? Uh, yeah. Nina Manash Fire Rescue shall provide an informal update to the Nina Manash Fire Rescue Joint Finance and Personnel Committee of any change orders that were approved after the vehicle was purchased and will only gain approval of expenditures from the committee and both finance committees if the costs will exceed the budget of 590 and authorize the directors of both communities uh, financing options from Pierce Manufacturing and approve the most ad advantageous financing option for both communities. In addition, authorize the Nina Menashe Fire Rescue to sell the 1997 Pierce Quantum once the new engine is in service. Is there a second? A second by Alderman Kruger. Is there a discussion? Alderman Sevenick. <coughs> Thank you. Um, actually, I think uh, what Alderman Nichols was referencing earlier was that the um, the cost uh, possibility was something like 580, although we budgeted 590, and uh, the committee, which I'm also on, um, felt that it was important that we watch our dollars here and that. Um, the cost not to exceed the 559 figure um, if there were added things that it had to come back to that committee. A lot of times you have to realize this is a half a million dollar piece of equipment and the fire department has a lot of different types of specs and new uh, rules come out all the time in the meantime and every department's a little different. Now I think the, the uh, fire department uh, or the council in the past purchased a fire truck that didn't have quite the specs they wanted and they ended up spending more money down the line. So this committee wants to take on the responsibility to make sure that this doesn't get out of line and that we watch what happens and if, if something um, we don't feel comfortable about then it will be brought back to the councils. Chief Cohen, would you like to comment on that? That's not the way I read this motion. The way I read this motion is, is that it says that you're authorized to spend up to 590000 without it coming back to the council. And, am I reading it wrong, or is that where we're going? I th think that's correct, that it wouldn't come back to the council unless it exceeds the 590. I think... Alderman Stevenson from Nina, as Alderman Sevenick had stated, that if it got over the 559 with change orders, that it would be a courtesy to come back to the Joint Finance Committee just to make them aware of any different cost changes in the in the truck, which we don't foresee. Um, but if that happens, then we would bring it back to Joint Finance, and then they could review it and and uh, go forward from there. Alderman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Chief, I've talked to you about budget items, and you know, uh, I know in the past we've ordered trucks that weren't spec trucks. Uh, we had to have them in a hurry, so we took one off the shelf, if you will, that was ready to go. And I know at that time you have to have add-ons. Uh, I see all the paperwork on how this uh, was carefully looked at. Uh, we even went out this time, which I encouraged uh, to look at other dealers and try to get the best price for the community. Uh, I think uh, the committee did their due diligence and really spec this out. And I'm not in favor to see this truck is specced out. This is what we need. I'm not in favor of seeing this growing from 559 uh, without council approval. And just by adding some more equipment on there just to add equipment. Uh, it's been specced out. 
we told them what we need. This was the price, and uh, that's a lot of money. So uh, I, for one, would like it to come back uh, to the council if we exceed this, just because we approved the 2018. Uh, when you show them that, we're looking at other competition, which we did, and we talked to them about their quality problem, which was addressed in the, that their quality, they've looked at improving their quality uh, and given us a better product. And uh, by doing all that, I felt we got a great price here. And now I just hate to, for the taxpayers, you come in with a great price and then all of a sudden, yep, we're back up to, I like to see us keep it, uh, at a at a at a good buy, which everybody works so hard for. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just again, a point of clarification here: the uh, we keep using the 590 figure. That is what was in the CIP budget, but the um, the motion is not to exceed 580. So. Um, there is no 590 figure. It's it's 580, and um, I think what Alderman Stevens was trying to uh, do here was uh, with his amendment was to make sure that that the Pierce, which the cost not to exceed 559,240 dollars. Um, from the just because it says the CIP budget, that that number isn't necessarily what they can spend. That has to be understood, and that um, the Nina Menasha fire shall provide an informational update to the Nina Menasha Fire Rescue Joint Finance Committee of any change order that were approved after the vehicle was ordered, and will only gain approval for expenditures from the committee and both finance committee if the cost uh, will not exceed the budgeted amount and although it says in the minutes 590 here it should be 580 I think it should be 580 I think that's correct then we do need to amend your motion because the way it's listed on here. Well, I read it. That I read it. Okay. So what? What is? What is the motion that's on the floor? Well, then? it shouldn't be 590 up there. Number one. although it says it's in the CIP budget, but the but the okay. I just read it. Mm -hmm. I have um, to go through that all again. It, it. I guess it doesn't really matter what the committee committee chose you can make a different motion I just want to make sure that everyone here knows what your motion is so what do we have as the motion at this point Abby? just what's in the packet so you would just like this to say it will only gain approval if it does not exceed five hundred eighty thousand dollars then rather than five hundred ninety right and so Anything under 580 does not need to come back to the council or the. No, it doesn't. It goes through those two fine. It goes through the Nina Manash Fire Rescue. Oh, geez, I just lost my place here. <laughs> Where am I? So it just goes through the Joint Finance and Personnel Committee. Right, both those committees. Okay, so they would approve anything over the original 599. Which is what the practice has been. 580. Up to 580. 580. Okay. Cannot exceed just because it's in the CIP for 590. Okay. And what was the uh, your um, the deputy WG Foss? Yes, Foss. He indicated that he he doesn't believe that it's going to exceed the 560 figure, regardless. Okay. So. I just want to be clear that this is the motion that you are moving forward with. It's a motion to approve the ordering and purchasing of a 2018 Pierce Imperial engine and related equipment to replace a 1997 Pierce Quantum for a cost not to exceed 599 240 up oh, 559 240 oh, wow. sorry. Okay. 
of the approved 590,000 in the 200, 2018 CAP budget by January 31st, 2018 to avoid the February 1st, 2018 price increase. Nina Menasha Fire Rescue shall provide an informational update to the Nina Menasha Fire Rescue Joint Finance and Personnel Committee of any change orders that were approved after the vehicle was ordered and will only gain an approval for expenditures from this committee and both fi finance committees if the cost will exceed the budgeted amount of 580000 and Correct. authorize Director Esker and Director Jacobs to review the financing options from Pierce and approve the most advantageous financing option for both cities. In addition, authorizing the Menasha Fire Rescue to sell the 1997 Pierce Quantum. Correct. Okay. So now everyone knows what the motion is. Did you have other discussion then, Stan? Nope, just okay. thought I'd better. I just wanted to make sure that we were all clear. I mean, I did make the change. You're not clear. Oh, Attorney Captain. Well, it talks about providing an informational update about change orders. So is there a requirement that change orders go to the finance Joint Finance and Personnel Committee or not? Chief. Chief is shaking his head I yes so. as well yep. as if it exceeds seven. the five if the change orders exceed the five fifty nine two forty, then we would submit the change orders or whatever um, changes were necessary uh, to the committee. Okay. So then we're all clear here then? You're still thinking, okay. Alderman Taylor. That's not a lie. It was a It was just clarifying okay. what Thank you. Alderman Sevenick had. Chief, I know when you purchase a truck, you have a uh, sales rep that you deal with. Okay, now when we kind of just walk me through when we sell a truck, uh, how do we sell a truck? Usually the way in front of my house with a sign on it. You know. <laughs> but the Usually, uh, Deputy Chief Foss lists it on the Wisconsin um, site that has equipment from other cities on it. And okay. generally, we've done very well on that site where we typically get more than expected for okay. for the sale of that equipment. So he'll it's almost like an auction type site, okay. and uh, we've done very well in the past listing things on that site. Okay, and then how do we set the price on it? Uh, what we'll do is uh, DC Voss will call around and ask for, kind of do some research on what that year truck is going for. Um, he will contact Pierce also just to verify what they believe that would go for, and then we just set a price. We may bump it up a little bit just to see if we can get it to set a minimum bid on it, and uh, we've done very well with doing it in that, that fashion. Okay, and then... As the bids come in, I mean, let's say they come in way under what you think, do you just take the highest bid or do we still take the highest bid then, yes. Okay. So we don't, and uh, everyone can see where the bids are at any time on there? Correct. Okay. It's kind of like eBay, okay. where and you can see the previous bid and so up, any, up. any of us could look at it? Yes. Okay. Yep. James wants to buy for <laughs> What's that? I said you want to buy a fire truck. Well, you and I were going to buy that one fire truck that time, <laughs> and we backed out. <laughs> it was going for next to nothing. Thank you. Um, so Robert's rules would require if people would speak more than twice, we'd have unanimous consent. Would we have unanimous consent to hear from Alderman Sevenick at this point? Yeah. Alderman Sevenick? That might be the rule, but in protocol, we've decided that that's a foolish rule and that we won't be using that. So anyways, I just want to make a very important point here. Let's look at the year of this truck, 1997. How many of you in here drive a 1997 vehicle? Maybe not. <laughs> okay. This is our public protection. I think uh, we're due this new truck. I, I believe, and I'm actually very proud of this fire department, how they've done their due diligence on this. So I hope that you vote for this. I heard 66 over there. <laughs> Those would be great fire trucks. <laughs> oh, oh. That's right. I, I didn't mean collectors. Alderman Collier, did I turn your light off or did you? Okay, I'm sorry. Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I have a couple things. Are we amending this motion here, or is this staying as written? It, it should be 580000 yeah, in there. The memo from the, uh, from the fire department was very clear that the CIP was for 590000 The motion for the recommendation from the Joint Personnel and Finance Committee was that it just wouldn't exceed 580000 So if you, the, um, the recommendation from the committee was very clear, in my opinion. It is um, Just with that being said, Chief, I have a question for you about the decision to sell this vehicle. I know typically a lot of times when we're taking one out of regular service, we'll put it into a backup position. And could you explain methodology as to why this one's going to be for sale as compared to put it in for a reserve vehicle? Sure. It's not in stone yet, but after uh, having some meetings with our mechanics, they believe that this truck, because it has more bells and whistles on it, there's more areas of concern about needing repair down the road, even in the status of reserve for five years approximately. Um, some of the things that are failing on it are they're, they're having issues with the ladder rack. And so having that come up and down, they've been replacing things that may not be replaceable down the road. So uh, the current truck that we have now that's in reserve is in really nice shape and it has less items of repair as far as fancier pieces of equipment on it that we think we can make it through the next five years without having to um, have any major issues with it. So it's not in stone yet, but that's the reason we want to try and sell this one first um, so that we're not stuck repairing some of the things that may not be necessary with the current reserve that we have now. So is the resale on it a little bit better with the way that it's optioned out? That's well? the other, yes, that's the other thing is that we think we can get a little better resale on this truck versus the other truck. Okay. So, and this one that we're looking to order, as Alderman Taylor brought out in the past, we've been buying demo vehicles and then paying to have them optioned out and seen it go for at least 10000 sometimes more and stuff. So this one at the 500 59,000 is already optioned out the way that we desire to receive it. Correct. Excellent. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? John. Oh. Director Jacobs. Oh, just one other point of information. Um, with us making the with us with Manasha and Nina both making the payment by the end of January without before the price increase goes up, it would be another twenty thousand dollars. So it, it's important for us to lock in the price, get the payment made um, by the end of January with whatever means that both Nina and us um, decide on doing. If it's through financing through them or if we do this internally with our own borrowing, that's something we'll be looking at in the next couple of weeks, but we'll bring that back to you for the Menasha side of the purchase. But it's a $20,000 up that the price would go up on February 1st. And again, Robert's rules allows two I'll times to speak. Is there... Is there any objections? How long have you been mayor? We wanted to go by Robert's rules, so is there any objections? Seeing none. Uh, Chief, when would we take order? Uh, when would we receive this truck? If we were to be able to place the order in in uh, January, February, we would be able to receive it sometime end of September, October. Oh, okay. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, could we have a roll call vote? And it does say the 580. Okay. Once you get down further. It's, this is a long one, so. This is cool the way it scrolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like everything. Hey, we don't know. Yeah, they're all. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be a hard one. Can it's, you? Yep, you can okay. see here. So on it's 7-1. Motion carried on roll call 7-1. Item 13 is the Park and Recreation Board recommending the permit fee for the use of the Harbor House room. Is there a motion? Alderman Grady. I'd like to make a motion to set a permit fee of $75 per month and $900 per year for the use of the Harbor House room. Is there a second? There's a motion and a second from Alderman Collier. Is there any discussion? 
Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as this council knows the history on this, there were some of us that felt very strongly that all rental agreements go through the city council and uh, that wasn't necessarily followed last time. So some of us thought that probably the way to handle this, because it's just a small space, is to, to go along with the idea of such as renting a park shelter or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, that way we would, uh, we, uh, that was our kind of our compromise on this and we all felt a little more comfortable about that. Um, but I have been, you know, and then also too, um, Mrs. Taylor was making some good points about treating this like a storage unit or something. So funny thing that she had brought that up because I looked around, I'm also in the moving business and I looked at storage units and that's a darn good deal. So, and I appreciate the park boards looking at this. They did spend some time. And was that an objection? Or no? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that it should be just a slight bit higher. I just think that, um, you know, looking around the valley and that you, you can't find uh, anything for under $100. So I'm going to ask to off, unless someone wants to speak first, but I'm going to offer an amendment eventually that it be at least $100 a month. But I'll let the other council members speak first. Okay. Alderman Kruger? Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Again, uh, Alderman Sevenick explained uh, uh, quite clearly on, on the mindset on this uh, in the park board. Uh, but Brian, I would like to ask you a few questions on how the uh, park board came up with the uh, with the dollar amount. I understand that uh, uh, treating it as a storage space, but uh, everybody is well aware it's not being used as a storage space. It's an actual front for a business, which is completely different. You can't run a business sort of a storage space. But just in comparables with what the other rentals that the city has, I mean, for a regular uh, a picnic rental spot in the park is $35 for a day. The pavilion is $80 for the day. Um, I, it, it, what was the reasoning on trying to keep it at, uh, I mean, below the below $100. I mean, me personally, I think 150 would be uh, would be even a fine number for a business to be able to use it as a uh, as a front for the business. But it, was there any particular discussion within the park board on why this $75 number came about? Well, I think as you uh, can read in the email or the uh, memo that I have here, I, I think the park board really just wanted to take a step back and really uh, look at the dimensions, look at the fact that it was unheated, uh, really just take a complete objective look at what this was, has been. This has been basically a storage room and a lounge for the last 15 years. Um, and so yeah, I mean, I, I think they wanted to take a realistic look at what it really was. And, and you know, and prior to the use last year, it, uh, yeah, like I say, it was just a lounge and a storage area and it wasn't really serving any value. So we, we tried to, uh, um, you know, sort of keep the, 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 you know, the use of last year kind of out of it and just look at the space, what is it? And we did, did a little bit of research on the, uh, uh, on the storage uh, rental rates, and I, you know, from the information I was able to gain, it was, you know, for for a comparable sized room, 160 square feet or so. I've, that, that's where I came. That's where I got the 45 to 65 a month. Um, talked to a couple of folks in Appleton, shared that with me. So yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, I, I guess the board felt like this is it was really a, a tough space to kind of come up with a number on. It's it's not, you know, the, and there's no restrooms there. It's you know, yes, it's on the water, but in a lot of ways, it's uh, you know, like I indicated, it's a, it's a used to be an overhang, a ticket sales window overhang. The the park department put some walls up, you know, a few years ago, and that's that's what it is. It's it's kind of hard to say that it's office space per se, but I guess that's what it was used for last summer. Um, it kind of a, I, I don't know if. Uh, you know, if, if it's a um, has all the amenities that a you know that a lot of you know organizations or uses might want, but this you know the one that worked came in last year, you know it worked out. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess we wanted to just you know step back and just um, try to place a value on really what it was and what it is. 
As it, if it was strictly a storage unit, I think the 75 would be an appropriate mode if it was just being used as storage. But it is being used for a profit business to run their business out of. Uh, so I, I will wait to see if anybody else has any comments. But I too would like to see it higher, $100, $150 a month, which is extremely, for a rental of an office space for a business, is extremely cheap also. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Brian, could you bring some clarity as to what this space is going to be used for? Well, if, if everything stays the same uh, as, as it was last year with this, uh, you know, kayak company, um, I, I believe they're still interested in coming back. And uh, if they, they may or may not be the ones that we issue this permit to. So um, I'm not sure exactly of their intentions, but I, I, I think they're interested in coming back. But, I, you know, again, we were, we we're trying to just you know, prior to last year, you know, we were trying to just kind of set that a little bit aside and just, you know, look at the space. So all of a sudden, it, you know, this area, you know, magically has some, you know, value that it didn't have two years ago. You know, if, if we were asking this question two or three years ago, would we be talking, you know, 150 <laughs> a month or, or would we be talking 50 a month? I, I'm not sure what we would be doing, but... That's kind of what I was thinking, and you didn't identify on here exactly who would be renting to, and I assumed it was the kayak company again. And when I looked at the, at the cost, I don't disagree with some of the other aldermen about the cost, but I looked at the value that that was giving to our waterfront as well, that they're renting kayaks and creating like little mini tours, you know, guided tours with kayaks and things like that. It really helps out our... Our exposure to the waterfront brings more people down to the waterfront, and I feel it's a worthwhile investment for us to make that affordable, to help make them be successful, and to and to help create that that attraction for for a waterfront. So I appreciate your your input, even though we really don't know what that is at this point. My other question is probably for our city attorney, and one thing that was brought up about our ordinance is these coming to the plan commission and coming to the council. And if that's accurate with our with our ordinance, is there a reason that this did not come to the plan commission? A permit fee does not go to the No, the rental. Well and we're just so because we're just calling it a permit fee that it would that it wouldn't have to come to the plan commission. I guess I'm not sure what you're... Well, it was brought up that if it's a rental, then it should come to the Planning Commission. And I'm not, I'm not really sure why, but I sit on the Planning Commission as, as our representative for the Planning Commission, so I'm compelled to ask the question, if that's what's in the ordinance, should it be going to the Planning Commission, or is it not coming to the Planning Commission because it's just a permit fee? And it's not an actual rental agreement. So you're not talking about something that's on the agenda today. You're talking about something else. Um, potentially, it's a protocol for this, as that it came to us at this point. As this fee would come to the Common Council to be established. It would not go to the um, Plan Commission. And that's because it's a permit fee, and it's not a rental agreement, correct? Because there's because it's a permit fee and that's how the ordinance reads. Okay, so it's Correct. really it's really the, the matter of how we're delivering the um, how we're delivering the agreement is that it's through a permit fee and not so much a rental agreement. Correct. And they're correct. Okay. By giving someone um, or by having it go through the common council and actually having a People use that word, rental, thinking um, a lease, but you rent equipment for a fee or you can rent um, park space for a fee. It does not mean that it is an actual lease, which is a, a leasehold interest in land actually gives somebody rights mm -hmm. to use that land for whatever purpose you're, you know, um, allowing them to use it for and that 
sets in motion a whole bunch of other um, legal rights to real property. That's probably not what you would want to do. When it's a permit, it can be revoked. You set the rules, you tell them what they're going to do or what they can't do. You can, you know, and there's no interest in the uh, land that really, from a city's perspective, would be the preference just to um, allow a, uh, or to give a permit. So if that kind of explains it, it, it because does. then when you're leasing something, you would go through, um, uh, you would go to the plan commission and would go to the common council for a lease. That's correct. So but in this particular area, this is really no different than a boat slip or something like that? Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. But it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, it's the Common Council that would decide that. Sure. If they want it that way, and then we'd have to make some changes to to the ordinance. But this is how it's presented to us today, is as a permit. Well, you're, you're talking about two different things. What's before you today is just a right. fee. Right. So yep. how something is uh, rented is not what is before you. Okay. I understand. Thank That's you. not on the agenda. Thank you. Um, the question I have, $75 per month and 900 per year. You're just telling me that they will pay us 900 a year if they got a business, or can they just say I'm going to rent it for five months? Because if we're renting it for five months, or potentially for only five months, and have it closed the rest of the year, then I have a problem with it. Um, Yes, it's a good price, but nobody's been in there, and I don't see nobody knocking down the doors to get in there. Uh, if it's a year, that's a cheap price for a year, but at 75 a month, I won't vote for it, just because if somebody wanted to vote, take it for two months, how do you stop them if they come to you first? And How are you going to do it? First come, first serve, or who's in there now? Well, there's a... The current agreement that we had goes until April 1st. Um, we would, wouldn't treat this really a whole lot different than we do our other park spaces and facilities with, with, in terms of rules and time of the year that we start accepting reservations and that kind of thing. We'd, we would just classify it the same way. To comment as well? I was in the question that was asked, could somebody just say, oh, two months? That is correct. Yes. Thank you. Um, currently, how would this, are we, is it just being covered through insurance through the Harbor House right now, self-insurance to the city, or how, we, I don't know if this works with a, a permit that what happens they trash the place or whatever else because we're, it's a permit now not a lease so how do we how does this affect with evicting too the attorney's saying that these are kind of questions that are a little bit outside of the <laughs> the realm of what the permit is but i do get your questions yeah um, i don't know if you want to comment on them a little bit but there are uh, requirements for insurance when somebody um, utilizes space. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the um, there's a uh, and I don't know how much it is, but that would I mean I just don't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Account. Yeah. But there are insurance requirements okay. that would be imposed. Increases per se. Um, it scares me too that it's not heated, so I could see that if someone rents us out per year and then all of a sudden we're paying the electricity on the place, they're just going to put a bunch of space heaters in there and now it's <laughs> heated. <laughs> and then our cost goes way up past $75 per month. Um, I don't know how the council feels that we should amend this, the price at a time or a year long at a time. We'll go. I'll let, I'll let Alderman I'll Seven. Speak, so, you know. <laughs> uh, you do at one time. 
Alderman Taylor. Use it well. <laughs> yeah, you gotta use it well, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I appreciate Alderman Sevenick and Kruger doing work on this in the past. And when we come to this permit, uh, I, I, I don't like the word at all because uh, we're not renting a pavilion. We're not renting a baseball diamond. This is a for-profit company coming to our city to rent uh, a structure for hopefully a year here. And as uh, the member of the public uh, uh, said before, look at this lengthy agreement that Sturgeon Bay has uh, that they put together for almost the same type of business. And you know, I look at other things with this, there's signage on the building. Nobody last year permitted them to put signage on the building. They parked on the street on the same site uh, all summer long. Nobody gave them permission to park on the street with that permit all summer long. Other people have to abide by those laws. Um, and I don't like us kind of dumbing down stored space. And I was wondering why uh, I was on the council when we built this into a boater lounge. Uh, why why don't we have this for a boater's lounge? That was the, the concept of it. Well, I, I talked to uh, Harbor Master Schabach about that and it, it, it really uh, kind of lost popularity over the years. Uh, very little use the last few years. When we first started it uh, 13 or 14 years ago, I mean, it was pretty popular, but it just, it just has lost interest, not, not being used a whole lot. Okay. Uh, I looked around for a stored space. I don't see any with prime waterfront development. I don't see any of them with customer parking. I don't see a, any of them with uh, a, a restroom for the employees that are working there that we have in that building. We have other restrooms for uh, their customers at the marina. Other storage facilities don't have that. Um, Alderman Solinsky made a great point. Uh, my wife and I were out for a walk tonight and it was a rental unit. The window was wide open and I said, there is somebody that doesn't have to pay the electric bill. You know, so it, it, people do take advantage of that, especially in the colder seasons. But I would like to say first and foremost, um, I'm worried about with this lease, as it happened last summer, the safety of our employees in this community. Uh, just setting up, a, using our property to have a for-profit business, to put people in the water in exposure to our, uh, our community's waterfront, which is good. But they also, there should be something in the contract where they have to educate these people about the dangers of the water right there up the river from the house. And we put our fire department personnel out in that river and, and they have to respond as they did last summer. So that comes at a cost and they're renting the city property. That's why there should be a well-written document for this that we cover all these things to protect our employees that are out there in the river. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of a much greater cost than this. I'm in favor of a, neck, of a much greater document than this, and we're not gonna call it a permit. It's releasing public property. We're leasing a, a structure to someone here in the city of Menasha. And this isn't a park permit thing. This is a, a lease of a structure. And as uh, the pub, member of the public said, Look at the size of this document that Sturgeon Bay has. And there's no rush in this right now. I think we should, uh, uh, the concerns should be looked at and we should put together a document and really understand this completely. And uh, uh, I would like to see this uh, uh, held or postponed or tabled for a period of time here that we can work with the director and the attorney and maybe look at this more of a comprehensive uh, lease than, than just a, a, a simple thing here. Because we do have uh, uh, some things that are happening here last year that the rest of the public can't, can't do either. So I'm in favor of, uh, of uh, postponing or tabling this. I'll yield to Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. 
Um, just so that we see we're getting a little confused, and I think the city attorney has been trying to emphasize this, is that we're not dealing with a lease. This is going to be a, a permit fee. And I, I personally agree with Alderman Taylor. I feel it should be a lease. But this was a compromise because of the, what it is, you know. So, but anyways, a lot of good questions here. You know, the city attorney brought up insurance. I don't, I don't have any information about that. Uh, I, Alderman Zelensky brings up some good points. I think there might need to be a deposit that's put down, if possible. Uh, if that's something you can do within a permit fee. Uh, Alderman Taylor brought up issues of signage. Um, and then Alderman Collier brought up a good point about, you know, four or five months out of the year, they're not going to be using this thing. So are we going to require them to rent it for the whole year or just the month? So you know what? A lot of questions. Let's send it back to committee. I see Brian's been writing a lot of notes. And let, we've got time. And let's address some of these issues and bring them back to the council. So I'll move at this time to refer it back to the Board of Public Works. Oh, excuse me, the Park and Rec Board. <laughs> Sorry. You don't want that, do you? No. Second. <laughs> From Alderman Zelinsky. I said first. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Um, so could we, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. And do you have all the information you need, Director Tungate, to get all the questions, hopefully? I think so. Okay. Item 14 is the Park and Recreation Fee Reciprocity Agreement. Do we have a motion? Alderman Grady? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve Park and Recreational Fee was it? Oh, reciprocity agreement with the village of the Fox Crossing for 2018 and to pursue a multi-year agreement with the village of Fox Crossing starting in 2019. Second. So motion a second. Is there discussion? Ted, did you have anything else? Oh, I'm sorry. No? No. Okay. Alderman Sebenek? Um I'm done with this. I'm tired of providing services to Fox Crossing. We've done it our entire life. And then what do we get? And I know reading the communications from the Park and Rec Board that actually city residents probably benefited last year more than the village residents. But I don't care anymore. I'm done with this. Uh, we, we have services that are not even comparable that they're, they're getting in the city of Menasha and the taxpayers keep footing the bill. I'm tired of it. So we got to draw a line in the sand at some point, and this is where I'm going to draw the line. I'm not interested in a reciprocity agreement until we can make things more equal between each community, because we've been giving out our services to this com to this particular community for way too long. Alderman Grady. I echo some of your thoughts, Alderman Zevenick, but then I look out for the youth, the kids. They're the ones that are going to suffer and or not have some of these programs and to fight over something. The dollars aren't there to support that claim saying, you know, sure, we have our disagreements with the village of Fox Crossing. I knew this, you know, would be a tougher sell, but. Not when you're looking at the children and the youth of our, our city and the programs and the things that they get out of this. Seeing no further discussion. Are you ready? <laughs> Could we have a roll call vote, please? <laughs> Motion carried on roll call 7-1. Item I is action items. The first item is the accounts payable and payroll for December 6th through 14th. Alderman Kruger. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the accounts payable and payroll for the term of 12-6-2017 through 12-14-2017 in the amount of $693,400.73. Second. 
Is there a second? Second. Did you get someone? Okay. Alderman Grady. Is there any discussion? Alderman Taylor. I'm not going to grand scan, but I'm going to take one lap around here. I did talk to the uh, director uh, with an item at 731, 737? 731. 731 uh, Taco Street uh, for uh, asbestos removal on a pri private residency. And I was just, he was going to give a comment to your director. I actually probably don't, I'm not the per right person to probably answer the question. I think the mayor might have a little more information on that. Yeah. All I know is I drive past that house, ever, or that residence every day on my way to work, and the house is now down and leveled. So there must be some background story that I'm unfamiliar with that the mayor could oh, probably share. It is, it is tore down? It is down. It oh. is down. And they've just, they've got like dirt and everything all the top of it. So the uh, site is totally leveled now. Yes. Amen. This, we've been working on this for about three years. So the city took action to raise that property. It did take us quite some time to get the contents removed from that property and to actually locate the owner. We tried, I don't know how many times, to get that served to the current owner. Um, in order for us to have it raised, we did have to certify that it was free of asbestos, and I don't know if there was anything else, but that was part of the cost to raise it. So you'll also see a bill for the raising of the building, and then we will place that on the tax roll for that property at that point. Okay. So we, we couldn't get the payments up front for this party? No. For the asbestos? I, I know they're gainfully employed. We, we could not get them to take action on their own no and that's why we did issue a raise order and they did not take action so then the city moved forward with doing it on our and you said there'll be a demolition bill coming too there will be as well okay i don't remember exactly what it was i know the neighborhood will be very happy thank you mm -hmm. i don't know what the check do you know what the check number was jen the check number oh, for that yes All uh, the check number asking uh, was on it was on page uh, combined page 15 of the packet of the uh, council payable check number 59683 to arrow lock incorporated for nine hundred dollars okay, seeing no other comments could we have a roll call vote please you didn't want that house it didn't have floors in a lot of cases <laughs> Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item two is the beverage operator license application for 2017 through 2019. Is there a motion? Alderman Kruger. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the beverage operator's license applications for the 2017-2019 licensing period per the memo dated December 13th, 2017. There's a motion and a second from Alderman Collier. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item 3 is the appointment of elections inspectors for 2018-19. Is there a motion? Alderman Sevenick? Did I get you or not? Try again. There we Move go. for the appointment of the election inspectors. Uh, the list that we were given for the 2018-2019 elections. Second. There's a motion and a second by Alderman Taylor. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion carried on roll call 8-0. Item K is ordinances and resolutions. The first item is resolution 2717. Is there a motion? Alderman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'll mo make a motion to uh, approve uh, R-27-17-17, a resolution to place an advisory referendum on the April 3rd, 2018 spring election ballot uh, introduced by myself. Is there a second? Second. So motion and a second from Alderman Zelensky. Is there any discussion? Let's see. Alderman Nichols. Thank you. 
in uh, realizing that this would be an advisory referendum and also remembering that uh, this process started in 2014, I think, was action was taken in 2015, and it's now almost 2018. It seems to me that the time for an advisory referendum on such an issue would have been back in 2014 or 2015. Uh, action has already been taken multiple times. The DOT has already invested over a million dollars in the project. Things keep moving along. And um, we are all well aware and informed of the deficiencies on the bridge. So I feel the uh, time for a referendum was back in, in 2014. Uh, and if the residents wanted to come forward with a petition for uh, a referendum, that would be another conversation, but at this point for the Common Council to act on such uh, a proposal, I don't support that at this time. Okay. Alderman Kruger. Thank you, Mayor. I, I do agree with Alderman Nichols uh, uh, to a point that this has been discussed over and over again, the DOT made their decision. But when I'm looking at this as, is we also made a commitment to the residents that we were going to try everything in our power also to try to get the state to take over the responsibility of the bridge no matter what, even if they went with option J. And I'm looking at this resolution as a quiver, or as an arrow in our quiver to have the uh, uh, electric actually come back and either say yes we want it or no we want it, where we can actually approach the state and say hey look, you know, even our residents are saying firmly no to this. Uh, if that's the direction that it is. Uh, so I, I'm not looking at this as being able to overturn anything because that's highly unlikely with the progression that is made by the DOT. I'm looking at this as a as a tool to try to approach the state with in the end to try to get them to take back over the uh, uh, cost on the operation of the bridge after they do option J. Uh, and I just think just uh, uh, being able to approach the state with a with an actual vote on a referendum by the residents, overwhelmingly the yes, or it could be overwhelmingly no, uh, uh, will help and aid in the city in an argument on that point. Alderman Collier. Um, two years ago I got voted in, and this was a hot, hot topic for two years, and it was the, the committee before me had to deal with it, and they voted for the bridge. And uh, we, as a council, voted for the bridge. I did not see any alderman here in the last two years ask for a referendum or anybody two years before. I did not see anybody that is a representative now on the council come to a meeting and ask for a referendum. I think referendums are excellent, but in the right place. This is the wrong time for this referendum. I am going to vote no, and I'm going to be progressive and stay with the new bridge. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in favor of this because Alderman Collier was right. The council did speak on this, and this council is in the majority of keeping a reconstruction for this bridge, not a whole new bridge in general. We want to rehab this bridge and not have ownership. That's how our council spoke, but we had a mayor veto and things changed. But as I see in the re recent document that we got, this $1.1 million, we don't even have an official document on that, so I, I find that hard-pressed to believe that. And as far as deficiency, it's been fine for 65 years. It's been, as far as the document that's been released, it's been outperforming for 65 years by 10 tons, so we can't say we have an insufficient bridge. So I'm in support of this. Let's have the taxpayers who pay for this bridge make the decision. Thank you. Yes, I look at this too as, you know, we're not talking $75 for a, a house down by the river here. We're talking millions and millions of dollars for a bridge. 
that the city of Menasha may be liable for, why not ask the people of the city of Menasha if they want it or not? Let them speak their mind and let them say what they want. We had a lady up here tonight complaining about a $50 increase on her taxes. My God, if we put this bridge in <laughs> and when the city owns it, we end up paying millions or even hundred thousands just for a, a bridge tender. That lady's not going to like her next tax bill, I can tell you that. So I think the referendum is important. I'm glad it finally came. We've been talking about this, it sounds like, for years and years and years. Put it to a vote and put it to rest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, some all of up here uh, refreshed their memory. I did bring this up for a referendum, and it was voted down by this council. And uh, Alderman Nichols is one of them. She voted it down. And um, when, when was that, Alderman Taylor? Yeah, it's uh, it's in the minutes. I'll show you. Okay. okay. So, anyways, uh, I don't remember that. You know, I watch I watch the state, and and. I'm kind of disappointed that this million dollar figure got tossed out there with the bridge weight limit. You know, it's, you know, it's ridiculous. Uh, and I watched the state uh, meetings and not one time have I seen them say, you know, that city of Menasha has spent this and, you know, boy, let's, you know, let's help that city of Menasha. No, they're dumping it downhill on us and burying us, you know. That's what they're doing here, folks. And, uh, it's it's not good, and I with that referendum question that I asked for that that failed uh, in June this year, the council voted five to three not to accept this bridge, and the mayor vetoed it. Now you got one person in this community that's saying we want a bridge, we want this new bridge and is sticking it to the taxpayers, and all I'm seeing is they've responded to the taxpayers throughout this community. On this past weekend, uh, I had uh, six phone calls uh, on Sunday alone just on this, this question, all in favor of a referendum. A referendum, like the people sitting here tonight, we represent them, and the people at home that are watching this, we represent them, and at no time, would I want to take anything away from them if, on a big ticket item? Alderman Oliver, Grady, who's a financial background, absolutely correct. Millions and millions and millions of dollars the city is going to spend on this bridge. And I know Alderman Kruger had some inflationary, uh, back in June, uh, uh, inflationary numbers for us to look at. And it's in the millions of dollars. Once we own this bridge, Right now, it'd be about $100,000 a year to maintain it. Uh, I look at the DOT, and I look at their bridge building in the last 10 years. Very poor. The Leo Frigo Bridge settled down, and I can't imagine what that cost. They built that bridge incorrectly. The Ray Nitschke Bridge in Green Bay, that is an open and closing bridge, that bridge has been down. It was just in the paper on the 11th and 12th that was broke down in Green Bay again. And I was trying to get some numbers from the DOT for this meeting, but uh, I know it's got to be 20, 30 times that bridge has been broke down in the last 10 years. We don't have an engineering department that can handle it, so we're going to have to call, say, we got a bridge down. Well, you know, you got all the consultants you got to bring in, then you got to bring in a company to fix it. And just that one phone call, I'm sure, right out of the chute is, is tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars just to get somebody here to look at it because we don't have the engineering department. The state of Wisconsin has all that. They have big pockets. Um, a city of 17,000 people do not have the shoulders to uh, maintain and, and own a bridge, uh, especially a drawbridge. Some years back, the state of Wisconsin wanted to give the city of Menasha the Fox River locks here at Menasha. Well, we looked at Alderman three Taylor, years before they closed. We're not talking about the Fox River locks at this point? I'm talking about the that's, DOT mayor, that the costs not in the, the state of Wisconsin wanted to give us things, okay? Okay, but that, that, that cost us a lot of money, and we turned that down. 
And we don't need to own a, if the federal government said, here's the Menasha Dam for you to own. And we're not talking we cannot, about the Menasha Dam either this We evening. cannot shoulder, I'm just trying to show these big ticket items that the state, federal government, and that want us to own. The cities cannot No one has asked us to own the dam. Properties. Pardon me? No one has asked us to own the dam. I understand that, Mayor, but what I'm seeing, these large ticket items that are out there, they want, everybody wants to keep pushing things down the road on, on us, and we can't afford it. And as a, another member of the public asked tonight, back in June, show us the money. Show us that we're not going to raise taxes. Show us where the hundreds and millions of dollars are going to come from for these projects. And nobody has showed that yet. And we had somebody in here tonight about raising taxes. I had conversations with people today on that. And why should a small community like this, why would we even want to take ownership of a bridge? Let the state of Wisconsin have their bridge. Let them deal with it. That's who deserves to own it. And they own it and quit kicking the, the can down the road and making us pay more taxes. And that's what the bottom line is. It's all about the money. And it's millions and millions and millions of dollars. And I don't know if Alderman Kruger will comment back in June when he put together that analysis of the inflationary numbers. Thank you. Alderman Collier. Um, as far as the bridge, the old one versus the new, I know the footings will be excellent because they're excellent on this bridge because of the rock foundation. So I don't want to compare it to Green Bay bridges. As far as the big ticket item, you can, well, four years ago you could have kept the old bridge, two years ago you could have kept the old bridge, but the people in the councils voted to go forward. Penix J, this bridge, move forward. Now you can see this council that voted 5-3. I look at the best deal and the best deal today is taking a new bridge and not the old bridge and let the old bridge, because you can see it, and if you can believe the report you just got or not, that this bridge is getting downgraded all the time. Eventually it's going to get downgraded. Then all of a sudden if it gets shut down and the state can't fix it or, re or replace it in two to five years, you want to try to live in Manasseh with one bridge? I think at this time we're painted in a corner. It's a terrible thing, but it's the best of the Two bad deals, the new bridge. Thank you. Alderman Kruger. Well, thank you, Mayor. I think there's a little bit of sidetracking here. Uh, no matter how this referendum turns out when it's voted on, I mean, everybody in the city could vote yes to the uh, referendum, and it's not going to change anything with the DOT. It may. The DOT may just sit there and say, hey, okay, you know, this is overwhelming. But I don't want the public or anybody else to get their hopes up thinking that this referendum is binding in any way. It's just an advisory referendum. And I don't think it should be played up as trying to imply that a yes vote on this or an overwhelming well, yes vote is going to change the DOT's mind. Uh, again, I think this should be looked at at the moment as a tool that we should have at least in their pocket uh, of if there's an overwhelming yes thing to be able to use to go back to the state and say, hey, look, we have this many people that don't want this either. Please figure out some say, law or statute that uh, um, you guys take responsibility to the bridge again. But I just don't want uh, uh, the public to think that this referendum is binding in any way because the DOT doesn't have to listen to the result of this in any size, shape, or fashion. Thank you. Alderman Benner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> um, I want to thank Alderman Kruger for his just final statement that he just made because that was one of the things that I was going to touch on. But a couple other things that come to my mind is, um, well, first I would like to ask a quirk a question. For this to get on, to get on the ballot for a referendum, when do we have to know that that's the desire of, of, this, of this body? Uh, we would have to let the county clerks know by January, I think it's the 24th. Okay. There's a number of days because this will be going to the April ballot. So it would have to be at the um, January 24th. 
I, I would have to let the county clerks know okay. what, yeah, what the referendum question would be. The reason I ask that question is because back in my mind, I like to make a motion to postpone, although that's not, I'm not making that right at this moment. And the reason I say that is because there's a lot of things that was said tonight that would imply that we don't trust the DOT, that they gave us numbers of their investment. They've, it's implied that um, they don't, we don't necessarily agree the new assessment on the weight value of the bridge, things like that. And also Alderman Taylor saying that he made a motion for this to be on a referendum and I'd be interested in that because at the time that we were debating this. Do you think I'd buy it? Alderman Taylor, Alderman Benner has the floor. Yeah, who else interrupted you all night long? So I'm curious about that because I think I would have been in favor of a referendum at that time because I don't disagree with the mindset that if we really feel that strongly about it, then the folks should have a say in it. It's just that this time I feel like it's, it's bad timing to do that. And what the final outcome is, I think, is exactly what Alderman Kruger had articulated, that that's what, that it'd be that, it'd be strictly advisory to the state to say that um, we may disagree with that, but I look at other things, and when we were talking about the bridge, you know, we were talking about part of also, you know, things coming up, and that's a reconstruction of our downtown. Well, we're going to talk about that tonight, and to me, that's all part of the same package. If we're reconstructing the downtown, the bridge, the roundabouts, the traffic flow, how we're approaching our investment towards our city, towards business, towards our towards our total image, and to me this is part of that, that I feel strongly about that is important to this community. And I think we should have it, and, and sometimes having some control is, is to our benefit as well. But, I, you know, we have a very strong relationship with the state, as we've seen through many grant programs that we've received from the state, through never had problems getting financing through the state as we've struggled through a lot of our steam plant issues and things. And what is your point of order, Alderman Taylor? I'm talking about grants and relationship, how much money we get from the state. I would agree that we're not talking about grants, if you want to. I, I respect that, and I, I just really, my dialogue was towards our relationship with the state. and and that anything that we would do here or imply here or things that we've stated here of mistrust between us and the state, I'm just concerned about our own image and that we project that responsibly, that if we're going to state some of these things, that we actually get facts and we talk about them. And so at this time, I don't think it's a crisis that we get this decided tonight. I'd like to make a motion to postpone and come back with those facts and figures that were discussed here tonight, um, the potential for a referendum that was stated some time ago possibly, um, the, the dollars that the state has invested, and whatever it may be for the weight limits that were put on the bridge and, and that it's implied that some of that could have been out of convenience and things like that. And so I'd like to see, I'd like to see some of those facts come back to us and and uh, continue the dialogue at another time. There's a motion to postpone on the floor, except for the attorney is <laughs> going after me, so I'm not sure what she's going to say. If I can just ask when? The motion to postpone would be for the next meeting. Okay, to the next meeting. Is yes. there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. And from Alderman Collier, postponing is... I always forget, debatable, okay. Um, so right now we would just be speaking on postponing. Does anyone have discussion on postponing? Alderman Taylor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, there is time of the essence here. If this council doesn't believe they represent the public, the public will, uh, I've heard members of the public say they, uh, they'll pass 
uh, papers for a referendum. Uh, so that pushes them back uh, in a real tight timetable. So it's just a, a, a stall tactics here uh, by people that aren't going to vote for it anyways. Alderman Grady. My question would be to the council. The next meeting is January 2nd. Or are we all going to be here on January 2nd for that meeting? The second or the being here? I think it's the second, right? 2000. Mm -hmm. is yeah, what so. Okay. Right now we got a full body. So postponing, I understand, uh, to get some answers and some questions, but it's still the topic is do we, do we offer a referendum to this? to the people and as Alderman Kruger stated too it does not mean yes you're going to get a bridge or no you're not going to get a, a new bridge it's just get it out there and so uh, the idea to postpone would probably uh, I would probably say no any further discussion on postponing Alderman Taylor by postponing here too uh, we take this away from this referendum is to let the people vote on it and it's also to let our state legislature know and our state senators know what the people think here. They're the decisions makers in Madison. It's not up to the DOT. These are the people that represent Alderman us. Taylor, that how does this relate to postponing? Further. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, the item on the floor right now is to postpone to the January 2nd meeting. Could we have a roll call vote, please? Motion fails on roll call, three, five. Is there any further discussion on the question? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote on the question? Motion carries on roll call. Five, three. Item N is public comments on any matter listed on the agenda. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak this evening? Sir, well, we need to get the microphone back, but if you could come up and if we could get your name and address for the record then as well. I turn the wrong one on? There you go. There we go. Sorry. Okay. Dave Bueller, 2032 Dreamfield Lane. Um, been interesting to watch tonight. Um, we're right where we were last summer. Um, it seems on one hand, we talked, it was talked that you represent us, and in other cases, that representation is withdrawn. So, if I were to be the one to start a petition to get a referendum, you know, there's not time. And the kind of the, the sentiments to me came out that um, that might be enough to have you agree to have this, this referendum. Um, it's almost talking two sides of representation. Um, my bottom line on the bridge is I really don't believe that any municipality should own things like um, things that they don't need to own. And especially a city like Menasha with the tax base that's here. Uh, my property, I've only been here nine or ten years, and my property taxes have gone up 25%. Um, to me, where I lived before, they went up 25% in 25 years. Um, it's phenomenal, especially with the 2008, 9, 10 flat growth. Um, this just seems like we shouldn't be accepting financial obligations that we absolutely do not need to accept. And property taxes are quite high. Mine went up 200 bucks um, this year. Um, so, and of my 25%, only 200, only what, 6% was self-inflicted, but um, 
I'm concerned about controlling costs, accepting responsibility for things that are really not ours to, to share, and I can get this in front of the people. And when, when the referendum is written, put, put financial information in it, or have a, 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 a paper that you can cite go to this website or whatever to, to get the estimates so that voters know what they're, what they're voting for. So really don't follow the, the, uh, the zeal to have the roundabout and the other bridge um, construction uh, at our nickel. Thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Randy Rapella, 1128 Southfield Drive, Menasha. Five to three, what a number. Five to three was the number that the current council voted to turn down the bridge in June, but now five to three was the same number that was accepted to uh, have, the rev have the referendum. It worked one way, but it didn't work when they, it was five to three back in June. I don't understand why it didn't work. It was turned down five to three in June, but now five to three, it's acceptable to have a referendum, which I agree, we should have one. We should have had one four years ago before there was any vote from the aldermen to decide on the bridge. The people should have had the referendum placed then, and then you guys could have used their ideas to base your vote on. All right, um, with that being said, What's going to happen now if the people vote to not support the, the new bridge? Okay, that's my sentiment. What will happen? Well, right, that will, what will that do? Well, it'll be brought back to say, well, the current council voted it down five to three. They don't want the new bridge either. Well, then it's going to end up being pointed on who made the deciding factor to have the bridge, which will go back to Mayor Merck's, okay? And I just think that's um, just creating problems for the city of Menasha. Um, I just wish we would get together and would have gone off that five to three vote back in June rather than parlaying this whole episode. So just disappointed the way that this council has been working. Um, uh, I don't know how you can be changed, but I wish the five to three vote would have been good enough in June because it was good enough today. It wasn't that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Seeing, seeing no one else, is there a motion to adjourn? Alderman Sevenick. Thank you, Mayor. Um, what, what is at this time, before we move, I want to wish everybody, especially the people who will watch this and the folks who took the time to come and watch our council meeting this evening, uh, a joyous, happy holidays. And um, I'll move that we adjourn. Second. Yes. All those in favor? Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.